says that she loves me Isn't it lovely when the one who loves me is the one who loves me I suspected that, you know, how how we show up is is enough and that if we can just get enough of us to see it then then we can be it and then and then that becomes the norm not the, the hoes that joe scott was talking about not not the n words that 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 is predominant in our music and and in our comedy even because i have a, no n word rule that lamont broke uh but to make a point but uh i'm just very clear that we we can create the world that we want to live in i'm seeing it I've, i'm watching it I'm, li I'm listening to Urban View and I'm like, yes, I drive around and just listen. And from Clay to Loree, to I mean, it's just like, wow, you can have a vision that nobody was asking for because nobody was asking for this. Nobody, <laughs> nobody. And then show what it looks like. Now I got another fight with these companies, right? So those of you who went to Essence, you know that there was this, um, thing where Essence gave a cease and desist to a uh, bookstore, a black owned bookstore. Now, Essence Festival comes to Louisiana, New Orleans, into a community that's already there. And yes, I'm, I'm sure all of you who went to the festival had a great time. I'm sure it was amazing. I'm sure it was all of the things. Um, but there last year, cause uh, it started, I, I, was, I was watching my timeline. Um, uh, what what is it? the sixteen nineteen projects? Is the uh, Hannah Nicole Jones Jones Hannah is it Nicole Hannah Jones? Yes, she she was not invited to Essence, but she she had an event at a local bookstore, black owned bookstore, right? And this year they were like, no, nope, you're not going to be able to be doing things during our festival. So they hit that bookstore with a cease and desist. They could not have any programs, even though they had things planned. And so Gary Chambers, who is a leader. Didn't get elected because y'all in Louisiana didn't show up, even though you had the numbers to get him elected. I'm going to say that Gary Chambers went to social media and um, let's play. Let's play the Gary, the first Gary Chambers, not the first one, the, the one that I sent you second, where he explains what happened. What's good, y'all? First, this, let me say thank you to everybody who shared uh, the video. This is no. a temporary restraining order issued in New Orleans on behalf of Essence magazine that stopped black business owners from making money during Essence Fest. Let me explain. This is Tamika and Kim. They own Lit Diaries in Atlanta. They were putting on an event in partnership with Baldwin and Company, who's owned by a brother named DJ in New Orleans, uh, for Essence Weekend for authors in New Orleans. Let me make a long story short. So Essence decides that they find out about this event that's happening at Baldwin and Company. They send a cease and desist letter. Uh, the parties involved respond to this letter to make it clear to Essence that we're not trying to copy anything that you guys are doing. There's no branding associated. We're independent. We're on private property. All of these things. Essence gets that letter. They still file an order with the courts. 7.30, the morning of the event, they get an order from the court that says that they cannot have their event the day of the event, and it's canceled. They can't have their event because the courts have said that this black business, these two black women, this black-owned bookstore in New Orleans can't have their event, and Essence is the reason. The city council president of New Orleans issued this statement, though. Council President J.P. Morrell says, my office is aware that an event planned by a local business on private property during Essence Fest was forced to shut down due to an alleged violation of the Clean Zone Ordinance. It is completely inappropriate for any large-scale event visiting the city of New Orleans to negatively impact our local businesses with something akin to a non-compete clause. It is especially concerning that the canceled event was organized by a black owned business and would have showcased black female authors on a weekend that is supposed to be dedicated to black culture. It was never the intent of the council for any ordinance, much less the clean zone ordinance to impact private businesses hosting private events that happen to coincide with the timing of Essence Fest. Here's my truth. Uh, the black women who are a part of creating this event, as well as DJ, the business owner in New Orleans, are people who I have uh, an admiration and respect for because they do tremendous work for our community. It is wholly disappointing that Essence uh, would file such a document to stop black folks from making money in New Orleans while you're a guest in our city. As great of a guest as you are, you're still coming here. and. I'm gonna be honest with you. As big of a show as Essence is, to say that you're worried about a small event at a bookstore and that part. filing documents right. to stop that part, that part. 
Uh, I have many feelings about this. Uh, Richelieu Dennis reached out to Gary Chambers and somebody else, and they, you know, they had a conversation, and it has been resolved. But why was this your first Richelieu Dennis? Why? First of all, um, I happen to uh, have done a book with the person that put the four men in the room to create essence. It was originally going to be called Sapphire. Ed Lewis, Charles, uh, Mr. Smith, Clarence Smith, and two others, four black men who were junior in this investment bank situation. This man had a seat, um, Russell Goings, on the stock exchange, the first black man to have a seat on the stock exchange, said black women need a magazine. We can have a conversation about <laughs> that as a separate uh, Susan Taylor became the face. She was, uh, I believe, the assistant uh, to Ed Lewis at one point, got elevated, editor, amazing human being, amazing uh, example of what grace and style and vision looks like, took Essence to the next level. I don't know if Richelieu Dennis understands the history. I know that he made his business uh, providing, I think, hair care products, uh, Shea Moisture, uh, to black women. I know he made his money off of the backs of black women. I have a lot to say about this. Uh, and, and Gary Chambers, we'll post Gary Chambers' other video uh, where he talks about the meeting and he said it was resolved. But I don't, I think the, 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 the very notion of what was done to begin with, to me, makes this a more problematic situation even if you met and tried to fix it because your first go-to was a cease and desist on a black owned bookstore and a black, uh, two black women doing something during an event. Like, let me just say, um, and y'all know this, there's a lot of people that pimp off of the stuff that I do. I know that there are producers for all y'all's favorite TV shows sitting there with notepad and pen and write in and I'll get no credit, not a single coin, but I'm glad that the conversation, I even heard some of y'all's favorite, even in sports, parroting things that were said on this show. And I know they listen because I get the text messages. I know, I know they're listening and you can't help but be impacted by the things. You ain't got to give me credit. I'm glad the conversations are being had. That, that said, again, if you live in abundance, you don't worry about those things. Those are for small people. That's, that's what people living in lack. That's, that's tiny, tiny people work right there. We're too big for that. So I, I just need to say that and to be continued because there's a lot more to be, to be said on that. Says that she loves me. Isn't it lovely when the one who loves thing is the one?